So um, once again, the presentation is about um, tenant protections during the pandemic. Um, and beginning uh, in August of 2020, um, you, many of you might have heard of, of the bill AB 3088 that came from uh, Governor Newsom. Um, it was a law that was protecting people from being um, evicted who are, were, were unable to pay rent. Uh, that bill expired in January and another bill replaced it, which is Senate Bill SB 91. Um, so SB 91 came into effect January 28th, 2021. Um, once again, it says it, it's just a continuation of AB 3088. And it says that a tenant cannot be evicted for non-payment of rent for rent that they owe starting September 1st, 2020, all the way until June 30th of 2021. Um, as long as the tenant meets certain requirements, which we're going to talk about in the next few, few slides. This applies to all rental units, including people that are just renting rooms within apartments or within homes. Anyone that is considered a renter, it, this bill is for you. Okay, so for the eviction process, um, you know, when someone, is, a landlord is trying to evict you, they must serve you with a 15 day notice to pay or quit. A 15-day notice looks something like this. Um, it can come in a couple different forms, but this is the you know, general standard form that they can get off of line, off um, online. Um, this is the first you know, type of notice. It could also come in the form of a three-day notice, 60-day notice, um, but that's the initial form that will get the eviction process started. Um, the second thing is it, they'll have to go to court. Um, and get something called an unlawful detainer. And then that, you know, that's the more this, the second part of the eviction process. Um, just because you are given this 15 day notice or a three day notice or 60 day notice does not mean that the police are gonna come. It has to go through the court process and you have to you know, have it an, an unlawful detainer that comes from court to evict you. Um, so for, for the eviction process these days, um, what's happening is that you'll get this 15 day notice also attached with a blank declaration and a notice of tenant rights. That blank declaration will look like something like, will look like this. This is what everyone is receiving. Um, it says that, um, you know, you can sign this and, and this will be your first step in being protected from eviction. Um, it says that you've been affected by COVID-19 either uh, financially or, you know, you've lost your job um, or your, 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 your income has been impacted some way by COVID-19 your hours are reduced, you have increased childcare responsibilities, you've gotten sick, a family member has gotten sick. In some way, you have been affected by COVID-19 and that's the reason why you're not able to pay rent. Either the landlord is going to present you with this declaration when they hand you that 15 day notice or you, they're just gonna give you that 15 day notice and then you'll have to go on our website, legalaidofmarin.org and you know, print this, this uh, form out. Um, and sign it and then give it back to your landlord. Once you do that, that's the first step in being protected from eviction. Um, okay, and so these protections, once again, are covering for the period of unpaid rent beginning September of 2020, all the way until June 30th of 2021. Um, so you, you've, hand, you've got, received that 15 day notice from the landlord, they're saying you have to get out, um, then you go and you take print out that uh, declaration form or they give you one and you sign it and you hand it back to them. So that, that's the first step. The second step is that you have to pay 25% of all your missed pay, rent payments by the end of June when the SB 91 bill expires. So it's, it's not that you have to pay 25% of your rent every single month. Um, it's just that the entire, all the missed rent payments. Um, so here, here's a little example to help you understand. Um, if your rent is $1,000 per month, uh, then the total month, uh, the total rent owed during that time for a period of five months will be $5,000. Um, you must pay $1,250 by June 30th, 2021. So that's the 25%. Um, so, sorry, we left out on there that it's like five months have passed. Um, but by, by June 30th is the amount that's going to be what you owe. It's, it's not going to be the entire $5,000. Um, so I'm sure you're wondering what, what's going to happen with, you know, the, the rest of the, the money that's owed, that 75% um, that I didn't pay. So that money, um, you know, it's not free money. It's not going away. Uh, the landlord can start coming after you for it beginning July 1st. Um, and so, you know, you can either start to work on payment plans. 
You can apply for rental assistance programs, which we will talk about um, in, in the next slides. Um, or you know, you can you be prepared to, to go litigate this in, in court, um, which the landlord can come after you for. Uh, when you're giving that check for the 25%, um, be clear for what uh, months you're making that rent payment for on the check. So say you um, are paying that 25% for the months of March through May on that check, make sure that you're writing, you know, this amount of money is for the months of March through May or March, March through June so that you are locked in and you've, you've um, fulfilled the obligations of the bill which says that, you know, you have to pay the 25%. Um, and so, and, you know, that's, that's all that you have to do to, be, to not be evicted for failure to pay rent from September of last year to June. It's the declaration every single month that you are unable to pay the full rent and then the 25% by June 30th. So once again, um, it's not free money uh, that is coming, you know, is, is, is happening for that, the rest of the rent that's not paid. Um, the landlord can start going to uh, bring a civil action either in superior court or they can go to small claims court beginning um, in, in August. So they can go to civil, to file a civil action beginning July 1st, but they can go to small claims court beginning August 1st. Um, and so, you know, we can, we can help you navigate that. Um, but if you do happen to get into court, um, we do tell people that you can count your claim by saying, hey, my landlord, uh, you know, had, uh, didn't, didn't repair my stove. He didn't provide me with water. There were, there were pests. Um, so we do help people to start, you know, making the notes of what repairs went unfulfilled, um, you know, when they contacted their landlord, when, when the landlord did not, um, you know, try to help them, um, you know, that can be used in that court process to try to I get rid of some of that money um, that is owed if, if it comes to the point of going to court. So uh, right now, like I said, you know, the blanket statement is that there are no evictions for failure to pay rent, but there unfortunately are some loopholes um, in which landlords are using to evict people right now. Um, the SB 91 does say that you uh, that there can be only just cause evictions. Um, there, there has to be a reason stated for the eviction, right? Um, it, it definitely can't be non-payment rent, but reasons that are being allowed are the following. Um, if there's criminal acts uh, from the tenant, um, if the tenant's being a nuisance, if there are serious lease violations, um, if the owner wants to reoccupy their, their apartment or their home, they're allowed to do that. Um, if the landlord wants to withdraw the property from the rental market, and if the property has been deemed a red tag, which means it's, it's under such um, disrepair that it, it's not habitable, people can't live there anymore, that's, um, uh, that's gonna be deemed by the, by, by the city, um, by, the, by the county. So um, these are reasons for which the evictions are being processed right now. Um, so additional protections that SB 91 has provided. Um, landlords cannot charge late fees. Landlords cannot consider COVID-19 rent debt as a negative factor for prospective renters. Um, landlords cannot use the current rent payments to cover back rent. So, um, you know, say you owe for September of 2020, and you're right now you're able to pay for um, March. Um, they can't use your March payment to cover for last September. Um, landlords are prohibited in using the security deposit to satisfy the debt. So say you're moving out for, for this month, um, you know, that security deposit, that needs to go back to you in full if you, if you met all the requirements to get that back. If you owe rent for February, they can't use that security deposit to pay for February's rent. Um, so there is money coming down, it, that has been, you know, is coming down the pipeline to help renters right now. $16 million um, in federal aid is going to um, be distributed um, by you know, Marin County um, or at, from the state. Um, SB 91 created, a, and so there's gonna be different programs that this money is gonna be used for. One of the programs is for landlords. Um, landlords can start to apply beginning next week, um, March 15th. There should be a, a portal that'll come up on Marin's uh, web webpage. Um, and that will allow them to apply for rental assistance. 
uh, money from, from the state, um, but it's facilitated through Marin uh, County. So uh, landlords will be able to receive up to 80% of a tenant's unpaid rent from April 1st of 2020 all the way to March 31st um, of, of 2021 um, in exchange for forgiving 20% of the tenant's rent. So, um, you know, it's, it's a great program. The landlord has to be the one to initiate it. The, the tenant, um, you know, if you guys are tenants, you can go ahead and tell your landlord about this great program um, where they can get free money. You know, the, the only, the caveat is that they are not gonna, they're missing 20% of it, right? Um, so that's the only, you know, unfortunate part for them is that they're not going to get their full money. They're only going to get 80%, but it's, it's a better opportunity for them because right, right now people might not be able to pay that rent, um, you know, in, in August, if they go to court, they might not have the money until, you know, years later when they have, you know, solid jobs again. So it's a really great opportunity for landlords to get some of their money back. Um, however, if the landlord does not want to participate in the program because they, they're trying to get their full money, um, tenants can apply for the funds themselves. However, they're, they're, you know, tenants will only be able to get 25% of the rent um, between the, the months of September 2020 and March 2021. Um, and so once again, the landlords will be able to access this program, uh, the application for this program um, on Marin County's website next week. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions about that, please let me know. We, we don't have that many more details um, than what is presented here, because like I said, the, the program hasn't rolled out yet. So just to, you know, give a quick summary over what we've talked about so far. Um, uh, what, what do you do if you receive 15 day notice? Do not leave your home. Um, like I said, that's just the initial step in the eviction process. Um, what you're going to do is if, you're, if your landlord did not present you with that declaration, the COVID-19 declaration, you're going to go on our website, legalaidmarin.org. You'll see it's, it says on the topic COVID-19. You'll click on that and scroll down and you'll see the declaration. You're going to print that declaration out and sign it, take a picture of it for your records, um, and then you're going to hand it off to your landlord. And you'll do that every single month um, that you're unable to pay your rent from now until, until uh, June. Um, and, uh, you know, you might still receive that 15 day notice, even if you proactively give that declaration to your landlord, you, they still might come with you, you know, come to you with that 15 day notice. That's okay. It, it doesn't mean anything. It can't go further than that. Um, and so, you know, it, it's totally fine. Just, just go, you know, continue doing what you need to do. Um, what your landlord cannot do after, you know, giving you that 15 day notice, they cannot lock you out of your home. They cannot threaten to call ICE and or sheriffs. They cannot cut off your utilities. Um, they cannot take away services that are provided in your lease, like parking, um, you know, anything that's provided in your lease, they can't mess with that. They cannot harass, threaten, or do any other behavior to force you to move out. Um, and they definitely cannot ask you for financial documents. Um, there's a lot of people that have said that their landlord is, is saying, I want you to prove that you've lost your job. I want to see your bank statements. I want to see your, your income, um, your, your tax returns. They can't do any of that. Um, and so if you have, you know, if you're experiencing any of that type of harassment, um, just contact us. And what we can do for you is start by writing a letter to the landlord, explaining to them, you know, what, what your rights are and what you cannot do. Um, and usually that takes care of it from there. So there is this thing called um, a master tenant and maybe some of you guys are renting from a master tenant. Uh, that's the person that has the lease agreement with the owner the, or the landlord. Um, and you're you know, renting from that person who, who doesn't own the property. Um, and so we just wanna establish that that master tenant is the same, has, you know, it owes you the same um, you know, rights, the duties, as uh, the original, the landlord, the owner. So it's so whatever everything that I said about the process um, for protecting yourself from eviction, do the same thing with the master tenant. So uh, what if I pay rent and or have a lease with the master tenant? Um, they have the same obligations as a landlord under the law. They must go through the same eviction process as a landlord. There's no difference. What if my master tenant stops paying rent? So the, it, it can get tricky, but just keep records of all of your rent payments. Don't pay in cash. Um, make sure that there is a trail for who you've been paying rent to. 
Um, if, they're, if they want to remove themselves from the equation, you can try and pay to the landlord directly or the manager directly. Um, you can submit your own declaration to, that, to the landlord or manager and keep a copy for yourself. What if my master tenant abandons the unit? Um, you are still a tenant by law. The landlord must go through the court to have you evicted. Um, a landlord is not obligated to enter into a lease with you, but you can try. Um, there's no guarantee. And, and once again, that's something that we can help you with. Um, if you, you know, qualify for our services, we can help navigate how to create that relationship with the landlord um, if you don't already have that relationship established. So unfortunately right now we're seeing a lot of rent increases. Um, it's, it's really, a, it's surprising that landlords will think that they can get more money from people during a pandemic, but it's happening. Um, and so generally it's, it's, a, it's being, a, it's allowed, it's, it's lawful increases. There are a few exceptions. Um, if you're a resident within the canal, uh, within Marin City and different parts of Nevada, um, it goes by track and, and like according to the census. So we need to look and see where, you know, where your apartment or, or your property sits in, in the list. Um, but um, there is a rent increase ban for a freeze in those areas. So it's conceivable that, you know, any amount, any increase that you've gotten is unlawful depending on where you live. But anyone outside of those protected areas, um, are, you know, generally rent increases are allowed. Um, if there's a rent increase, this is for everyone, over 10%, that could be considered gouging and is illegal in a state of emergency. So once again, if you're outside of those areas and you received a 10% increase, we could potentially help you argue, argue to your landlord that that's illegal. Um, if you have a rent increase over 6%, that's another one we can potentially um, you know, make an argument for that that's violation of state law. Um, but once again, just contact us um, and we can at least tell you, you know, if, if you're in a protected area or not. Um, so for those that do not have legal status, uh, they, a lot of people have been concerned about getting legal help, about getting any rental assistance um, help uh, because they are afraid that it's going to impact their green card application. Um, it's, it's, called, it's something called public charge. Um, and we just want to let people know that uh, the following does not affect, uh, you know, public charge. Doesn't uh, lead you to, you know, be negatively impacted um, as someone, um, you know, as a, as a public charge. Um, and the, so that's the following of accepting help to pay for rent from nonprofit organizations. That's completely fine. Applying for CalFresh, you can do that. Seeking emergency medical care that is completely allowed, um, regardless of your legal status. And, and the same thing with COVID nineteen testing as well, of course, of contacting uh, legal aid and other nonprofits um, for legal assistance. That does not affect your immigration status whatsoever. Um, you know, if you have doubts for any of these, like definitely contact us um, and just get the information and we can, we can help you navigate that, that fear. Um, super, super important slide is about where you can get help um, paying for your rent. Uh, so like I said, that the money that's coming down from the state um, is going to the county and they are uh, putting people on lists right now to give them a rental assistance. Um, so that's free rent money um, as long as you are in under a certain uh, income bracket and can be able to show that with some documentation. Um, so that's the number highlighted, uh, 415-473-2223. Um, these organizations listed below are the organizations that are helping to distribute this money. So um, that's why I say like this is num number one to call. And then um, you might be, you probably will you'll be helped by one of these organizations that's helping to distribute the money. Um, so if you call St. Vincent de Paul like first, they're just going to tell you to, to call that number. Um, and then, you know, because they're, they're supporting the county with this money. Um, if you need other help, like finding some uh, temporary shelter, that's a reason to call these organizations directly, Ritter Center um, and Ad Adopt a Family. These are organizations that are helping people to be able to uh, get into shelters or to, to help get uh, mental health um, assistance right now. So that's why you might want to keep those numbers handy. Additional resources, um, you know, we would definitely want you to go to our website and get that handy declaration if you're unable to pay your rent. Um, and then also the county has really great um, information 
Um, I, also, I did want to let you know on, on our, our YouTube pages and our Facebook, we do have other videos um, for more information about tenant protections right now. And we do need to, um, that's definitely one of my jobs to create a new video about SB91. Um, so that will be in the pipeline too, but it, it, it's just gonna tell you all the information I, I just told you now. Um, Yes, so in conclusion, just you know, get that handy declaration, sign, date, and, and keep a copy for yourself, take a picture of, of it, and then hand it off to your landlord. Um, for any rent payment that you're making, um, and you're completely able to make a, you know, a rent payment each month, even if it's not the full amount, but just be, be sure to indicate on that check what you're making that payment for. Um, you know, for which month and, you know, what, yeah, which month you're making that, that rent payment for so that it gets allocated um, to, to meet that 25% threshold. Um, you have rights as a tenant. A, a lot of people are really scared that, you know, they're going to be on, on the street, but the, the eviction process is long and it's, it's multi-layered. Um, and so, you know, don't, don't fear, fear that you're, not going to have any any way to stay in your home until you find a new home. Um, just communicate with us um, about what your what your rights are, um, where you are in the process, and and hopefully we'll be able to you know help you stay in your home longer if, if you're you know fearing eviction right now. And once again, of course, it's it's okay to ask for help. Um, there's a lot of people in your same situation. Um, you know. It's, so, so many people are, are at risk of losing their house right now. So um, just let us know what, what we can do to help you navigate the process. And we're definitely here to support you um, in any way we can. This is our phone number. Um, that's my personal email, um, work email, and um, definitely here to help uh, in any way that I can. Um, that, that main phone, phone number will take you to um, the receptionist um, inbox. Do you just leave a message and we'll get back to you, um, you know, either later that day or the next day. Um, but it is checked often. So um, if it's emergency, we will co contact you that day. Um, if you say you get a, a three day notice, um, eviction notice will be prompt with that. Um, yeah, so I'm super happy to answer any questions uh, that you all have. I think that Shereen is going to read them off. Um, but yeah, let, either let us know right now or, or contact me um, by email or by phone. Thank you, Tahira. A lot of great information, very clearly presented. Um, so if anyone has any questions, if you want to put them in the chat, that would be great. Um, so we, we do have a couple com a comment and a question. Um, this is a really great question. What constitutes being a nuisance? Is there a reasonable amount of noise allowed in a leased unit? You know, so a, a family with children, for instance. Are there some clear definitions to help guide us? Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely varies from case to case. Um, but, uh, you know, say for example, for a family, um, there, there's going to be reasonable noise that's allowed if there's like kids that are running around. Um, and so if, you know, we've had cases where we send people to a fair, fair housing nonprofit um, to help them navigate the discrimination issues there, um, because, you know, you can't be discriminated for having a family and all of that. Um, you know, say, for example, that there's you know, strong odors that are coming from your apartment from due to cooking or something like that. And if, if that's affecting someone else's, you know, mental health, they're, they're causing them physical, you know, manifestations of, of illness, that that's when it's like, you know, you could arguable that there's a nuisance there, but it's definitely fact dependent. Um, and so if you have questions of, it, about, you know, what your landlord is saying is a nuisance or not, um, definitely let us know and we can look at your specific uh, case. Uh, another really important comment um, from someone who says that their parents live in the canal and um, their landlord increased the rent in January. So it sounds like they should communicate directly with you to find out if they fall in a area um, that won't allow rent increase. Would that be the right response? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just contact us and we can look at um, the specific location of, of where they're situated um, but yeah, the canal, it's, it's generally protected. Um, so yeah, just let us know and we'll take a closer look at that to try to um, fight that rent increase. Um, 
Someone asked, can we still make online appointments on behalf of clients? If so, what is the response turnaround nowadays? Um, yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, you know, you should be able to use that form online. Um, if you have any problems, like I said, definitely email me directly. Um, we can put, I can put my email in there. We are trying to do right now um, kind of uh, online clinic um, to like in the hold like zoom sessions for people. And we're going to try to use that system of, of like a Calendly system, to, you know, where you're able to just make an easier online appointment for your clients with our, our partner um, organizations. Um, and so then we can be able to see people in those, you know, online spaces um, at that time. So we are like in transition of trying to, to make that easier to, for our, our partner organizations. Um, but yeah, if you want to just, you know, if you're have, having any problems, definitely email me um, and I'm happy to assist your clients. And just as a reminder, um, and we can give it again, but in the chat um, is the email address for legal, uh, is the website rather for Legal Aid Marin and the phone number, which I can give again verbally, which is um, the phone number is 415 the website is legalaidmarin.org. Um, and then uh, a really great comment. Can we get a copy of the list of agencies and telephone numbers for rental assistance? I was wondering if maybe we should go back to that slide. People could take a, a picture of it. What do you think yeah. of that? Yeah, there's a lot of great picture, information there. Um, yes. So while you... Yeah, and then we have another question, but let's get back to there because I think that that resource would be pretty essential for so many people. So this is your email address. It's this one. Yeah. So if you all wanna take a photo of that, and again, as a reminder, the presentation will be posted on um, the Marin County Free Library YouTube website, this presentation, so you can refer back to it. And of course, um, you can contact me. Another great question, will you share these slides? These are really informative. So um, if you like to hear, you could um, send them to me and I'll share them out or, yep. or anyone could also um, yep. email can, here directly, but I can put my email in the chat. It's sash at marincounty.org. Again, I'm a librarian at Marin County Free Library. So if you email me, um, to here I'll send me the slides and I'm happy to, to share with you. Great, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the PDF of the slides. Perfect, yeah. Um, so a couple more questions. This is a comment, uh, it sounds like it'll need personal follow-up. Police report against my mom. So our landlord continues to try and get a police report um, against her. So this sounds like maybe a more personal question that we'd need follow up with your agency yeah yeah if you want to contact um you know our main number or email me i'm happy to try to to assist on that if it's not housing or employment related though i'll, I'll refer you to um, another organization or um, some other attorneys that might be able to assist thanks tara yeah there the he's uh yeah i definitely will send you an email because this person is already gone to the police four times and is unable to get a police report. He's trying to get a police report, but there's been mm -hmm. no, um, but there's been no, uh, uh, um, it's yeah, it's nothing. It, it keeps on getting an incident report, but it's just okay. another way for landlords to try to get rid of you. So, okay. you know, yeah. especially my mom's 82 years old. So, and he's 20, he's 30, I think. So. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, email me and I'll help. I'll try to assist. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you uh -huh. so much. Enjoyed your enjoyed your uh, share. <laughs> thank you. Um, so we have another question here. Um, should a tenant be given a declaration every month or just once? Yeah. So the the landlord should give everyone, um, you know, who who's not paying the rent the declaration when they give that fifteen day notice. But if they don't give that to you, then you need to go ahead and, and find it online and pr print it off and give it to them proactively um, every month. Yes, every month that you're not able to pay rent. And just as an aside, um, the library provides free printing um, that's available for curbside pickups. If you don't have access to a printer, 
you can give us a call. I'm one of the librarians who answered this line, but others do too at 415-473-2272. You can either send remote print jobs yourself or um, we can help you with that. So um, don't let that be a, a, a barrier. We, we great... also help people too with, with oh. we provide the declarations as well. If you wanna to come to the office, we're happy oh, to do that. Perfect, that's probably more efficient actually. Mm -hmm. um, Another great question for rental assistance, do we choose the organization or do we get assigned? Yeah, they're gonna assign you an organization. Uh -huh. There's a comment that says, um, uh, a viewer believes it's possible to put the slides in the chat so that they can be downloaded from there. I don't know if you wanna do that or not, um, but maybe if we have a little time at the end, um, there's yeah. a comment. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we've been emailing them out. Um, so I, yeah, I need them to turn into a PDF. Yeah, so um, please just email um, Tahira or myself and we'll send you the slide. Um, can you help with family evictions? A consumer is being evicted by her mom and dad. Do they have to give her 30 day notice? Um, so, the family, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely call. It's gonna be fact dependent. So just, you know, if you could reach out to us and we can give you more specific information. Um, but generally, every you know, you do need notice um, to be evicted, but in family situations, it can be a little bit more complicated. So that's why I would like to know the entire story and, um, see the exact relationship there um, and yeah if you so if you just want to email me or um, call our main line then we'll definitely help um, walk, walk you through that scenario thank you um, what about referring clients directly to the county line I know that that is the process at Canal Alliance yeah so that is the county line the one that's highlighted on the screen right now um, and yeah, so you have to go through the county to get the rental assistance money, and then the county is working with those other organizations like Canal Alliance to distribute that the rental assistance money. Um, yeah, so I'm, I think does that help answer your question? Hopefully, Laura. It sounds it sounds like what you're saying is that is always the starting place is the county. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and even if you start at Canal Alliance, you're just going to be referred back to that line. That's right. Okay. Um, a question um, is raised, how would we know if the landlord received COVID money? Um, so there is, you're, so through the new program, um, through the new program, that's, that's gonna be information that the county will have. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to determine that from, I mean, they wouldn't hide the ball, I don't know why they would hide the ball on that if they got the money because they, they need you to sign off on stuff. That's what, that's what it is. Like I said, the, the mechanisms haven't you know, come out, so we don't know what forms they're asking people to sign, but it, it will be a, a work together between the landlord and the tenant. So the county is gonna, you know, has to know that the tenant is, is gonna indicate through the forms that they're requiring people to sign that the tenant knows this money is coming for them. Um, but yes, the landlord is going to be the one that is getting the so, money directly. Tahira, can I ask you a quick question? The um, so in the beginning of the COVID last year, the, mm -hmm. supposedly a landlord's got money, right? Now, is this is this for that eighty percent, twenty percent that you were talking about? Uh, where no, no, no. I, I'm not sure exactly. Do? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what money you're speaking speaking of. If it was directly from the county or if it's from individual organizations, but uh -huh. this is something completely. This is a separate program that hasn't even been, been launched yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, the 8020 program, um, which should be coming out next week, okay. is completely new. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so there have been some questions asking for contact information. So I am just trying to respond again to Hira's email is T for Tom, D for David, E-A-N for Nancy at legalaidmarin.org. I've just put it in the chat. 
um, hopefully to everyone, but I will try again. And then um, my email, I'm a librarian, but can get you in touch with Kira or share the slides, is sash at marincounty.org. So sash at marincounty.org. Um, so let me go back to some questions and make sure we have not missed any. Um, so there's a question, should we send out this declaration in order to apply for SB 91? Should you send out the declaration? Um, so it, it's, so the SB 91 um, is the law that is, um, you know, is what allows you to send in the declaration. Um, so yes, you wanna submit that declaration to your landlord each month to be protected by SB 91. Okay. Um, the forms from my landlord included a page that talked about rental assistance and referred us to housing uh, as a key website. The site said more information is coming soon. Will we apply for rental assistance through the housing is key site or just the local number? Yeah, so they're, they're trying to set up um, that website so that you, they're, you know, people don't have to go through the number, the, the number that's on the screen. So. Um, when it goes live in the next week or so, um, you'll just, you can submit the application for rental assistance on the website. Um, but if you, you know, have trouble with inter access and the internet or whatnot, you can still use that, um, that hotline. Okay. Any more questions? Well, if not, um, I just wanna thank you all for coming tonight and thank to Hira Dean for sharing this very essential information with the community. Again, um, we have recorded this presentation. It will be on the Marin County Free Library website, uh, YouTube website, uh, and linked to through our own website, marinlibrary.org. So um, please follow up with it there because um, there's a lot to take in and, and it's, um, important to review it again. And again, we're happy to send you the slide deck to here, I'll send it to me and you can email me and I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, anything further that you wanna say? You're getting a lot of thank yous. Um, yeah, no, I'm re really happy that we're able to do this um, presentation through the library. Thank you guys so much, thank you, Serene. Um, and if anyone else knows uh, where we can continue to give presentations in the community, um, you know, during the lockdown, um, let us know. A lot of our staff is being vaccinated right now too. So if you know we can do legal clinics in the community, we're happy to do that as well. Um, we, we do um, go on Tuesday mornings to the Canal Alliance um, to provide on this you know, in-person legal help there. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. And um, don't uh, forget to reach out if you have specific questions. And before we end, I just wanna mention that Tahira will be presenting the same program in Spanish on March 31st uh, through the library, uh, again, from six to seven in the evening. So that's just at the end of the month. So um, if you know of anyone who would appreciate the program in Spanish, same information, um, please check back, okay? So um, I think we're just getting a lot of thank yous, which is very nice. And with that, I'll say good night, wish you all well. Please reach out if you have questions to us and stay safe. Bye. Bye, everyone. Be well.